For the seventh straight day, people gathered in Alberta to protest, fearing the province is ending its pandemic response plan far too soon. We feel very strongly that we need to continue to do the testing, to do the tracing, to do the isolating as a bare minimum response to, uh, to a situation that, that hasn't come to a close. As of August 16th, Alberta is scaling back things like testing, contact tracing and isolation requirements. The plan has prompted a lot of concern. Federal Health Minister Patty Haidu sent a letter Sunday to her Alberta health counterpart. Our most recent modelling for Alberta forecasts a potentially more serious resurgence in cases in the coming weeks and months, fueled by the highly transmissible Delta variant. Given this epidemiological context, I am seeking to better understand the public health rationale and scientific information behind your government's recent announcements. I feel, as I said in my op-ed, um, very sorry that I didn't communicate in a way that articulated the rationale, as well as the things that we're going to continue to do to manage COVID-19. Dr. Dina Hinshaw says testing, tracing and isolation work will shift to higher risk environments. Vaccine coverage, she says, means the healthcare system is unlikely to be overwhelmed by COVID-19, even as cases in the province begin to rise. Well, I believe I would not be doing my job if I kept focused on COVID as the number one risk that we face when I don't believe it is anymore with the advent of vaccine. We have had a laser focus on COVID for the last year to the detriment of many other processes, uh, you know, cancer diagnoses, uh, wound infections, um, you know, heart surgeries, all these types of things. And that that's had a measurable impact. Still, Dr. Simon Chakrabarty says it feels too soon to make these changes. But Hinshaw's reasoning, he says, is scientifically sound. Question is, how will the virus respond? The rest of the country will be watching. Heather Urex West, Global News, Calgary.